Ah, oh, yeah. We're, See, that clamps on very nicely. We're cruising nicely. now. Yeah. <laughs> Give Emily Johnson a few good cans. This is called a side cut can opener. And she'll do a great opening act. There we go. Ah, there we go. You spend a lot of time thinking about can openers. Believe it or not, I do. <laughs> her uncanny knowledge of all things can opener comes from her job as senior editor at the food publication Epicurious, where she's tested dozens of them. What does testing day look like? It looks like me surrounded by an obscene number of can <laughs> openers. And you just sit there and open cans? Yeah, cans and cans of chickpeas, white beans. Doesn't matter what. Cranking, 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 cranking. This is one that you rather like. Yeah, this is my favorite. After all that cranking, she has come to love the classic design with the little sawtoothed gear. She gets almost philosophical about it. Can you envision a kitchen without a can opener? No, I can't. The can opener is delightfully analog. It is a single use item that people can't get out of owning. Americans have owned can openers for more than a century. The design evolving ever since the original model in 1858. I think the most interesting part of the can opener's history is that it was not invented until around 50 years after the invention of actual canning. Wait a minute, what? <laughs> <laughs> the cans were so thick, like 3 16 of an inch sometimes. People had to use a hammer and chisel. To Literally? Open. Yes. I'm surprised they just didn't give up on the cans completely. I know. If they'd tried, Johnson might have told them to, well, can it. You can take these foods that will last forever in your pantry and make a whole meal out of them. Not without a can opener, you can't. Yeah, exactly. You need the can opener to get there. Ha, ha, ha.